Welcome to segment number nine of our V2 build series. In this segment, we'll be priming and painting our model. Before we begin, let's do a quick recap of what we've done up to this point. We've prepped the main airframe structure, we've assembled the fins, we've attached those fins to the airframe, We've also refined the fin airframe joints with filler putty during an optional step. We've installed the simulated fasteners to the joint between the aft and mid airframe sections. The antennas that trail from each fin have been assembled and installed. And finally, we prepped the exhaust vane and warhead fuse parts, then primed and painted them with an airbrush. It's now time to paint our assembled model. Let's chat a little bit about the scheme we've chosen, which represents the tactical round that's on display at the Imperial War Museum in London. This particular V2 is one of several gathered by British forces at the end of World War II as part of Operation Backfire, which was a British effort to familiarize their armed forces with the capabilities of the ballistic missiles that had besieged Southwest England during the final year of the war. During the backfire program, German V-2 units were directed to prep and launch a number of missiles from a launch site at Cuxhaven on the German coast, with the missiles impacting harmlessly in the North Sea. At least three remaining examples of the missile were sent to the UK for further evaluation. When those evaluations were complete, those missiles were then sent to museums throughout the UK for display. The Imperial War Museum V2 that we're modeling here is one of those missiles. Now, significant portions of that V2 have been cut away for display purposes, and it carries the German wartime serial number as well as the British post-war inventory numbers. Those are the yellow REB732 markings that can be seen in some of these photos. It seems to have been repainted at some point in a very glossy green color. Tamiya's British green spray lacquer seems to be a very close match to the Imperial War Museum display, and that seems oddly appropriate. I can absolutely imagine museum staff repurposing a standard British automotive color to paint their museum display, so that's the color we're going to use. Let's discuss our game plan for painting the model. I've already washed the model in the sink using lukewarm water and mild dishwashing detergent. The stuff you have sitting next to the kitchen sink right now is just fine for this task. This will remove any sanding dust, mold release, or skin oil that has managed to affix itself to our model during the build process. Next, we'll allow the model to completely dry over the course of a few hours. Then we'll use a tack cloth to catch any stray dust that might still be on the surface. Using a tack cloth is just like using a lint brush on your clothing. It's a loosely woven cloth material that's impregnated with a mild adhesive and you can find them at your local hardware store. I picked mine up at Home Depot in a three pack for less than $5. With that done, we'll prime the model with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer then load the airbrush with flat brown acrylic paint to paint the interior surface of the rocket motor nozzle. Every V2 motor I've seen in a museum worldwide had a rusty brown appearance, so this seems like a reasonable choice. After the acrylic has had some time to dry, we'll mask the interior of the nozzle, and then we'll paint the entire model with Tamiya British Green Spray Lacquer. Much of this is going to take place off camera, so let's get to work. We're back and we now have primer on the model. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use this Tamiya flat brown acrylic paint to airbrush the interior nozzle of the model. I've got the airbrush loaded up and ready to go. You'll also note that I have covered the workbench in paper. Normally I would do this in a, a spray booth, but that doesn't work real well for the purposes of this video. The other thing I've done is I've got an old kitchen towel and I've set the primed model on top of that. We're now at the point where I want to be fastidious about any possible scratches or marring of the surface of the model. Let's go turn on the airbrush compressor.
Okay, we're now done with the airbrushing of the flat brown on the interior nozzle. You can see a little hint of it here. We'll let this dry for a while. We'll come back and mask it off, and then we'll be ready to apply the British green exterior color. Our acrylic paint in the nozzle has been allowed to cure for a few hours. Now we're going to mask the nozzle off using this 10 millimeter Tamiya masking tape. I've cut short pieces of the tape, probably 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch long. I'm going to place those in the nozzle and gently burnish them down lightly. All the way around the nozzle, letting them overlap just a bit. Okay, we now have our interior nozzle masked off. It's time to put on the color coat. We're now done with the color coat and it's had a bit of time to cure. I'm really pleased at how the color turned out. Uh, and fortunately, I don't see any flaws in the paint at this point. The other nice thing is that with some color on the model, we can finally see some of the detail that's engraved into the fins and the airframe start to pop. You can see the rivets up here. You can see the panel lines and the fins. Uh, we've gotten away finally from just that stark whiteness that we've had in every video up to this point. The next thing we're going to do is remove the masking from the nozzle. Okay, the masking is out of the nozzle. All the colors look good. We're now ready to decal the model, which we'll do in our next step.